Okay, are you a good neighbor? Do you go out of your way to love your neighbor like yourself? Do you think of ways you can see and love the people around you better? Well, author Alexander Kirkendale explains in her new book how we can do that better. Welcome back, Alex. Thank you. It's great to have you. It's good to be here. Tell me about the motivation for your new book, Loving My Actual Neighbor. Well, I consider myself a kitchen anthropologist. And what I mean by that is that I stand in my kitchen and I observe the world. Mm. And what I have noticed is that we as people are missing each other, mm. that we want to connect in real life tangible ways, but we don't know how, we don't know where to begin, especially if there are some perceived differences between us and the person we're trying to connect with. Yeah. So when we talk about loving our neighbors, the word neighbor can mean the person on the other side of the world. We live in a global time. Or it can mean the person right next door. Mm. For my purposes, I really focused in on people that are within arm's reach. Mm. So that may be someone you work next to, the cubicle next to you. It may be the person that does live next door to you. Mm -hmm. But somebody that you could call in an emergency mm -hmm. if you needed help. But somebody who you could give a hug to, you could wipe their tears, you could give them a high five. Yeah. Because in this digital age, we are losing that real life face-to-face -face connection. We think we're connected to people, but we are missing something. I mean, studies show the more time we spend on social media, the more depressed we are. Mm -hmm that we are less satisfied with our lives after we've been on social media than when we've been on. Mm -hmm. S but the opposite is also true. The more face-to-face, real-life interactions we have with people, the more satisfied we are with life. And yet, we're losing the art yeah. of connection. And so, how? I know people want to. This book is about the how. Mm. And I feel like it's so timely. You live in the States, we're obviously a Canadian show, but the talk of immigration, the talk of seeing people who look differently than you, the talk of not just wanting to be uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. These are all conversations we are having globally when it comes to our neighbor, I guess you said far or near, is stepping out of our comfort zone, especially with people that don't look like us or do not uh, work or function the way we do. So how do we combat that? Well, in the book I talk about some practices that I think we can all implement regardless of our circumstances. So whether you live in a relatively homogenous community or in a pretty diverse community, whether you tend to hang out with people who are similar to you, how do you reach out outside of your own little self-created bubble? Or do you? Or do you, yeah. yeah. So these practices help us, no matter our circumstances, begin. Mm -hmm. And really I start with the very first practice has to do with holding a posture of humility. Mm -hmm. Because everything about how we carry ourselves into a conversation, mm -hmm. into an interaction with somebody, into even a discussion online, yeah. can be impacted by carrying a humble spirit. And by that I mean we remember who we are in relationship to God. Mm. I mean the very beginning of humanity, we decided, right, in the Garden of Eden, mm -hmm. that we were going to take over. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. when we do that, and we bulldoze into situations or into relationships, things just don't go yeah. as well as if we remember God is God mm -hmm. and I am not. Yeah. And what that tells us about our neighbor too, is that I am made in God's image, as is my neighbor. Mm -hmm. I have access to God's grace, as does my neighbor. And so it levels the playing fields a little bit and it also helps us remember that God is ultimately in charge mm. and we can thank God for the relationships that are available to us, whether it is that random person that lives next door to us or our coworker or even someone within our extended family that we maybe don't have a lot of contact with and sometimes that's on purpose. Yeah because there's conflict there. You start off the book uh, with a, a story about a young lady, a mom that lived across the street, uh, and it challenged you because you had never really connected with her. Can you share some of that story? Yeah, I was at home one evening by myself, 
and I noticed outside the window the red and blue lights of police cars. Mm -hmm. And I live in a city, so that's not uncommon. Mm -hmm. And I looked outside, and I had never seen the amount of police activity that was there. I mean, maybe 20 police cars. Mm -hmm. And they were obviously doing some kind of crime scene investigation with my neighbor's property across the street. And what I knew about the people that lived in that unit is that, like me, they had little kids. Mm. Uh, they appeared younger than me, so my guess is that the young woman probably became a mom as a teenager. Mm. I did not. Mm -hmm. And I did not know how to get in touch with her to see if she was okay. Mm. And it really bothered me that I couldn't even pray for her by name because I didn't know her name. Mm. And so it required me to look at myself and ask, why didn't I know her name? Why didn't we make a connection? Was it because we both had little kids and so trying to have a conversation with toddlers is Not impossible, existence. right? Yep. And, or was it the perceived differences that kept both of us from making that first move? Mm. Because she also didn't make a first move towards me. So was it that age difference? Was it the lifestyle differences that I perceived just from observation? I don't know and I will likely never know mm. because she was gone after that and I thought, it took a crisis for me to realize that I didn't know her. I don't want it to take another crisis for me to realize I don't know the other people right within arm's reach. Yeah. And so that was a little bit of a motivation for me to take this commandment seriously. Mm -hmm. That when Jesus was put on the spot and said, okay, what is the most important thing mm -hmm. as far as our role here on earth? He was a very clear, love God and love your neighbor. Mm -hmm. So we have to ask ourselves, how are we doing at loving our neighbors if we take our faith seriously? Yeah, and sometimes we leave it to the, we leave it on the back burner. Okay, so you talked about number one, holding a posture of humility. Point two, asking questions to learn. And you talk about something in the book called Saturday living. Mm -hmm. Explain this, because I love this idea. Well, as people who know the gospel, we know the good news of Sunday morning as far as the Easter mm -hmm. resurrection, right? But I think of the first disciples and they were living, uh, Friday was a pretty dark day if you think of Good Friday, mm -hmm. that their life was turned upside down. Saturday was kind of that in-between time and then Sunday comes the good news. Well, really all of us as we're walking on this earth as believers live in that in-between mm -hmm. space because Friday represents the pain and the grief and really the sin of the world. And we are tethered to that. As we live in our bodies on this earth, we experience pain as believers, but so do our neighbors. Mm -hmm. We also have the promise of Sunday mm -hmm. and we know the good news. We know the hope that we can find in Christ. And so we're tethered to that mm -hmm. as well. So we're standing in this in between, almost like a bridge mm -hmm. And as we hold on to the hope of Sunday, I want us to also be holding on to our neighbors as they are experiencing the hard of this life and really show them that there is more. Yeah. And I love the fact that you're challenging us to ask questions to learn more because, again, we go into a number of relationships just assuming. And so when you open up with questions, do it for a living here. Yeah. But, you know, that allows the person to have a feeling of, oh, this person is interested in me. They're invested in me. Is that, am I speaking correctly on where, where we're going? Right, and you're carrying with you that posture of humility yes. and saying, I don't know everything about you. Yeah. I, I maybe think I do, or I maybe think I know part of your story, but let me ask questions to learn. That's important. Mm -hmm. Not asking questions to make a point mm -hmm. or not asking mm -hmm. questions just to get conversations started so you can check that off your I talk to my neighbor right. to-do list, but truly to learn. And then that leads into the next practice of being quiet to listen. Mm -hmm. Because if we don't listen to people's answers, the questions really have no point. Yeah. And when I talk about being quiet, obviously I'm talking about, you know, you, you can't be talking and listening to somebody's answers. It's just impossible to do both. But it's also a quieting of our spirits mm -hmm. to have enough margin in our lives to hear the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and to quiet ourselves. And when we practice that alone, we are more likely to respond by asking the Holy Spirit to be part of our conversation in that moment where we can say, Lord, 
I don't know how to respond right now. They are telling me something that's shocking or they are telling me something that is angry and I don't know how to respond to their anger that's being directed at me. Holy Spirit, help me right now. Be the filter. And if we practice that alone, we're more likely to practice that in the middle of a hard moment. Oh. I love it. And again, it's as simple as putting down our phones and seeing people. We once did that, <laughs> once upon a time. You're helping us get back there. Thank you so much, Alex, for your time. Again, the book is called Loving My Actual Neighbor, Seven Practices to Treasure the People Right in Front of You. I want you to know today that you are seen and you have the chance to see others, to see others as God's image, to see others as how God sees them. And maybe you feel like you haven't been seen. Maybe you're going through a really rough time. Maybe you feel like you're not really loved by your neighbors or by your community, by your family. Know that Jesus loves you today. We have some amazing neighbors on our prayer lines that would love to pray with you, encourage you. If you don't yet know the, motiva the motivation behind this book, and that is Jesus, we would love to introduce him to you, get you a Bible into your hands. The number's at the bottom of the screen, 1-866-273-4444 or you can email prayer at crossroads.ca. Stay with us. We'll be right back.